Hello everyone, I'm Margaret LaFond, Program Assistant at Rehoboth Beach Museum, and I'm happy to welcome you to our new online program series, uh, Rehoboth History in Their Own Words. Uh, since 2007, the museum has been conducting in-person interviews, which have been then transcribed and edited for listening and viewing. These oral histories provide an interesting view of everyday life in Rehoboth from days past. The project has been made possible due to a generous donation by a, a historical society member and a grant from the Delaware Humanities. Um, this program is an opportunity to see the oral histories, the ones that, that are on video, and where possible, talk to the subject and ask additional questions. Um, before we get started, I just want to get over a couple little things for best practices. I will be keeping everybody muted. Um, there is the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. If you would use that to uh, enter any questions that you have um, at, after the uh, audio, the video is uh, complete. I will, oops, excuse me a minute. I will, I will um, then open the chat and hopefully Faye will be there by that time and we can ask her the questions and talk with her for uh, some more interesting details of her oral history. So without further ado, I think uh, Faye, uh, I think many people know who Faye is, but just for those who may not, She's a journalist, she's an author of five books. Uh, she's worked in theater, and while she was not born in Rehoboth, she spent a large portion of her life here and considers it her home. Uh, Faye has written, uh, she is, was a driving force behind Main Street in Rehoboth in the late 80s, and she has worked with Camp Rehoboth for 26 years and is currently editor of the newsletter, Letters from Camp. So today we will watch an oral history of Faye interviewed by Robert Johnson of the museum. Okay, so if everybody will bear with me one minute, make sure I can get this up and we will go forward. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure she's there. Marge, the video is not working. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Um, yeah, we didn't see, we don't see the video, just see you. Well, we don't want to see that. We want to see the video. Okay. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. Thank you. Okay.
Can you see it now? Yeah, but there's no sound. There's no what? There's no sound. Well, it's just starting. The music in the background? All right, let me try. Did you share your sound? I'm sharing also? my screen. There's also, there's a share computer sound thing too. Hold on just a minute. I'm sorry, everyone. She's on. Thank you. Now I'm, I'm, it's not, my screen share is not working with sound. Why is it every time something happens? They say they can't hear. Can you hear it now? No, cannot hear it. <sighs> I can't understand why it's not sharing the sound. It always has before. We have to up the volume. Did you try that? I'm going to try, Marty. Just if you all will bear with me, I'm so sorry. I don't know why this is happening to me. I really don't know. Uh, Marge, did you, when you did the share, did you share the computer sound to button? There's a little button there. Is that the, where, what, Marty, what button you're talking about? When you, when you, when it, when there's a, when you see all the different, when you do share mm -hmm. screen, there's uh -huh. also a button underneath the list of all the screens to share that says share computer sound too. It's not coming up. That's what I'm. Okay, wait a minute. What I'm going to do is, here's, okay, share screen, share computer sound. I'm sorry. Thank you, Marty. That's what it was. Okay, great. Hopefully that is it. I hope so. Let's see what happens now. Now all I have to do is find it. Okay. Uh, we, we partied, we'd come for a weekend, uh, my partner. Yay! Uh, oh, okay. really? for quite a while. Uh, when did you first come here and what do you remember about those early years? The first time I was here was the late 80s and uh, we, we partied, we'd come for a weekend, uh, my partner and I, and uh, then by the early 90s we had a lot of friends here 
and we could not uh, afford a beach house like many of them did because we had a boat and all our money went into our boat and we decided wait a minute maybe we can just move the boat to Dewey on the bay and have it be like our floating condo which we did by 1995. Where did you moor it? Into? Right at Rehoboth Bay Marina on a dock and what would happen is after all the other people would go home on Sunday nights we'd stay over until Monday and we'd have like uh, a gay bar on the pier. We, people brought hors d'oeuvres and cocktails and, and we had music and it was a terrific time. Did you go to the boathouse, places like that? No, that was earlier, it was gone by then, but yes, in those days we used to visit from Washington DC and go to the boathouse, the Nomad we went to in the 80s. I'm um, trying to think, those were probably the two that we went to. Of course, we did come also and go to the Renegade in those years. So the women went these places. Did they go any other places um, in the earlier years? Like the beach, for instance. Um, I think at one time the women went to Poodle Beach and yes. then they went... Oh yes, they started at Poodle Beach um, uh, and then uh, up uh, north Whiskey Beach became Gordon's Pond and so that became uh, really where the girls would hang out and I think starting when we were here, uh, uh, you know, most weekends, people were up at uh, Gordon's Pond and uh, the North Beach. But everyone went to Poodle also. Uh, it, it, was, it was very friendly. So that's the, er, that would be in the 70s through the 90s, that's basically. Correct. Uh, yes. What restaurants did you go to? Uh, when we were here early, the, the Back Porch was here. The Blue Moon was here as of 1980. Um, and at the time, of course, the late lamented Cloud Nine was here, uh, and many of the others. Um, we, we, it really wasn't as gourmet a, now what do they call it, the culinary coast now, but it wasn't like that in 1980s and uh, early 90s. It was, it was a lot of fried fish and french fries, <laughs> uh, jakes and, and all that kind of thing. But. Uh, we used to go to house parties. We had friends who had big houses here and we'd party on the weekends at their homes. They would, if we didn't live here yet, they would let you stay over. It, it was a lot of fun. So tell me a little bit about Main Street because as I recall, you were the president of Main Street. I was the executive director of Main Street. Now did Street. you take over from Kathy McGinnis? How yes, Kathy McGinnis, Kathy McGinnis founded Main Street and there was a board of directors. There were two executive directors for a short time before I came on the scene, but I joined in 1999 and I did 11 years as the executive director of Main Street. And during that time we started, we had about 60 members and we did a couple, the, the, um, I guess some of the programs were, were in effect already, like the Chocolate Festival and like the Community Unity Dinner. But Kathy and I and the board worked very hard because it was when the streetscape was supposed to was about to start, and we did all the public relations and communications with the businesses, trying to get through the four-year construction process of the streetscape, and that was Main Street's one of its major jobs in those years, from '99, 2000, 2001 to 2004, I believe. And uh, during that time, I teamed up with the uh, Art League, where uh, Nancy was uh, the director at the Art League at the time. So we did co-projects with the Art League. Uh, we did the Dolphin Project, and you may be around town now and still see some of the dolphins. We had 50 dolphins that were made by a sculptor uh, that we hired and uh, businesses sponsored them and paid for artists to decorate them and then we auctioned them off for money for the Art League and for Main Street. Do you remember who that artist was that created them? Ah, uh, gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't remember his name. He was not from here. And we, we put a you know RFP out and, and got somebody and he was wonderful. And um, it, it was just a, a really great partnership. Uh, with the Art League and we raised an awful lot of money and a lot of people have those wonderful dolphins on their porches and in their backyards to this day and we had an auction 
for them at the uh, convention center, and, and some of them went for upwards of ten thousand dollars. I mean, it was it was remarkable. It really was. That was one of our favorite projects. Uh, you've always been um, active in Camp Rehoboth and your writing how did you how did you get into the the writing business because you published several books and you right. write for letters right. and so on right. how did that all come about it's actually before a good story yeah. it's a good story on the week we came to Rehoboth with our boat we came from Annapolis uh, up the Chesapeake Bay through the CD Canal down Delaware Bay and into Rehoboth Bay. And we docked and we were there for a couple of days. And I had read letters. Uh, it wasn't very big. It was you know four, eight pages, ten pages. I don't know. Uh, and um, we were going for a hamburger in Dewey, and. We were there waiting for our order at takeout, and the owner was saying vile, horrible things about the gay people in Rehoboth. And Bonnie made me go outside because she was afraid I was going over the counter to get him. <laughs> but she talked to him. And we went outside and had our sandwiches, and I said, you know, I've got to call um, Steve Elkins at Letters from Camp. I've never met him, but I think that people should be warned about this place. And I called over there, or maybe I went over there, and that very afternoon, Steve and uh, the mayor of Dewey, Bob Frederick, uh, went over to see the owner of that place and tell him that his behavior was unacceptable. And I mean, I'm sure uh, it had to do with other things beside this, but the place closed very soon thereafter. It was what called was Colonel, Colonel Mustards is what it was called. And uh, I talked to Steve and he found out that I was a writer. And he said, well, why don't you write something for me? And I said, well, how about the story of us coming down along the water, getting to Rehoboth from Annapolis by water. He said, yeah, yeah, that's great. And so in 1995, that was my first column, and I've been writing ever since, and that's a long time. You knew um, Muriel Crawford and her partner. Did yes. Did you talk a little bit about the... Yes. Uh, Nyad, 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 Nyad Press, Press was the first lesbian press in the United States, and it became the biggest. Uh, it was run by four women, two of them, Anita Marchant and Muriel Crawford, happened to live in Rehoboth. And in 1973, Nyad uh, published the first lesbian book, and it happened to be by Anita, writing under the name of Sarah Aldridge. It was called The Latecomer. And in those days, you could not send lesbian publications through the mail because they, it was not, it was treated as pornography. Uh, you had to send it in the mail in a brown paper wrapper. Uh, it was, there were, in order to get the book published, uh, the, the hell that those women went through trying to get it published is really legendary. But Anita and Muriel lived here in Rehoboth and um, they were already in their 70s when they started this. And so they retired from the press in their 90s or late 80s and uh, opened A&M books for Anita and Muriel. And still continue, you know, I continued to publish a few books and I was lucky enough to have them ask me if I would put my columns together in a book. In 2004, we published the first group of my columns and I'm now on the fifth book. And Bywater Books, a, a, a well-known lesbian publisher, has taken over and, and is representing me, and, and all of my books are, are being published by them. So how did you get into writing? Did, what did you study in college? Were you journalism? journalism? I was a journalism and theater major. Where'd you go? American University in Washington, which is actually how I got from New York City uh, to this area and I never left the mid-Atlantic. I never went back up north. I got into journalism, you know, I, I edited some newspapers in the Washington area and then of course between letters and Main Street and then I started to write for Delaware Beach Life as well. I've been writing for them for well over, I don't know, 10, 12 years, maybe more. I, I, I have to go back just a little and say because of 
what Anita and Muriel did for me by publishing my books. They really gave me, between Camp Rehoboth and Anita and Muriel, they gave me that career. And I am so very thankful. And many people in this town loved Anita and Muriel. I think in the collection here in the museum are some of their artifacts, their um, whiskey glasses that they drank from every night. Because I used to say they loved each other, they loved publishing, and they loved Scotch whiskey, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> so they were, they were wonderful women. And they opened their house every Saturday night uh, to everyone in the area for a salon and people would go to their front porch every Saturday night. This was from the maybe the 80s, the, the mid 70s um, through 2004. Um, they had a salon on their front porch every Saturday and everyone, a cross section of people, a lot of Young gay men would come, uh, a lot of lesbians, but also all of the politicians, uh, people from uh, the religious institutions here. Um, I know uh, uh, would be uh, Father Max was over there all the time from uh, the Olive Avenue Church, and uh, it was just a huge cross section of people loved those women, and they loved them back, and it was really an institution until they both passed away in 2005. Where, where did they live? Where did they come from? What is a bit of their background? Washington, D.C. Um, and they, uh, Anita was one of the first female attorneys at Covington and Burling in Washington, D.C. She worked for uh, the World Bank. And I love the fact that she would go to Europe for the World Bank and uh, go on the Orient Express and, and, or the Queen Mary. And, and she would take uh, Muriel along as her secretary, which I thought was great. And uh, they used to tell us all about those wonderful times that they had together. And uh, so they were from Washington, D.C., but they, and they commuted back and forth, but they lived here full time from, I think, 1965. Uh, and, and Muriel and, and Anita would tell me they couldn't get a loan for the house in their own names. Uh, they, 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 they finally did, I think, from County Bank, but I'm not sure, but they were turned down from many many banks because they were two women uh, and they didn't have a man to sign for it and uh, lots of lots of great stories like that anything you you want, where any place you want to go any thoughts that you'd like to add well um, I I have to say the history of Camp Rehoboth to me is what not only makes this town so very special for gay and lesbian people but all over the country there are communities uh, who heard about Camp Rehoboth. Um, I was very lucky, my books went national and they heard about it through my books. And then when I traveled for Rehoboth Beach Main Street, in addition to lectures that I gave about uh, communications in small towns or, or how to make the merchant, you know, sign programs and, and that sort of thing, I also did a thing called Rainbow Flags on Main Street. and I talked about how the business community was so integrated, gay uh, shopkeepers and, non, and straight uh, non-gay shopkeepers, and how we all work together at Main Street, and that Camp Rehoboth sort of brings the community together. And people came up to me from towns, you know, as large as Indianapolis and as small as Huma, uh, uh, Louisiana. And they'd say, how can we start this here? How can we do this? But Camp Rehoboth was among the first. And I think their history in um, bringing this town uh, to understand what an asset the gay community is, uh, is their strength and is their legacy. And I hope it continues. You want to talk a little bit about the changes that you've seen? Sure. I think the biggest difference in this area along with the huge growth in population is what I said a little bit before, it becoming a real foodie town, a real culinary um, experience coming to Rehoboth. There's so many fine restaurants and I think it's, it's so different than it was years ago and that's part of its success as a resort town. Correct me if I'm wrong, but 
I seem to remember you did lighting and theater. I think I yes. remember going to the Rosa Negra way back oh, when. Oh my goodness, now and that's a did, long time ago. Well, we bought an 83 in Lewis, and right. we went and Denise ran it. Right. And you did something I did. With the we lighting. did shows. We did shows at the Rosa Negra restaurant on 2nd Street in Lewis in 95, 96, 97. Uh, just little um, what kind of shows? musical reviews. Uh -huh. I had uh, I had a, you know I did a lot of theater directing in the Washington area, and so I brought some folks with me uh, to come and do a weekend show, a couple of weekends in a row at at the Rosa Negra, and um, we had a ball and it was great. And then we moved to the Art League, and I did a lot of shows at the Art League, uh, and and it that from the early days the Art League was for theater as well as fine arts and uh, you know there was a problem at a certain point after we were doing theater that people complained they didn't want lights in the parking lot at nine o'clock at night and things so they stopped doing theater at the Art League and I feel very badly about that because I think it would be it's a perfect place uh, to continue the tradition of theater but we we did about ten shows there uh, over a eight six or eight year period um, in the early 2000s. Um, and then I've done some shows at Camp Rehoboth. And uh, I just did a show on the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots in New York. And we put together um, four readers and some music. And we talked about it as if it was in real time. We took the quotes of the people who were there and did it in present tense so that people could feel the riot at Stonewall as it was happening, and um, I would, the actors they were, they just did a wonderful job, and and we had a great time, and it benefited Camp Rehoboth, and uh, we're looking for another place to do the show now because it's still the 50th anniversary year. If you were to give advice to the younger generation, the L LGBTQ, right, or right. just young people in general, right. what advice would you would you give them? Before 2016, I would have given them the unencumbered advice, be authentic, be out, be who you are, meld into the group, life is grand if, if you're bullied and if there's, it gets better and better and better. I have been taken aback by the recent attempts through Supreme Court cases and various other things to put us back in the closet. And I'm offended by that. I'm angry. And we went in 1999 with Camp Rehoboth, the first time we were lobbying for any kind of anti-discrimination bill. And I was in the house in Dover when the gavel came down on gay rights, and gay marriage, anti-discrimination, uh, protection for transgender. And we've done it all. And now it seems like we're back there again. So what I'd say to young people is, be authentic where you can, protect yourselves, uh, but be as authentic and out as possible, and good things will happen. And keep pushing, you know, and, and be yourself. Don't, don't be anybody else. Don't, don't try to, you know, do what people tell you to do. Uh, people are much happier when they're living their authentic lives. Anything else? I think I'm good. Well, thank you very much. It's thank been you. delightful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I am so glad we managed to get that going. Marty, thank you. You were the one that got the uh, got me to the right spot. Um, okay, and and Faye has joined us now, and I see we have quite a few. Uh, chats. Thank you for not giving up. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, we have someone from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, and most of the chats are people telling me they can't see you. So um, uh, what can I say? Uh, we did finally get it started up. So no one seems to have any questions yet. OK, uh, Marty Rosenwig wants to know, where was uh, Rosa Negra? 
It was on Second Street in Lewis. It was a tiny little Italian restaurant that had about a, a four by eight platform in the front where we could squeeze three actors on a stage. Uh, and it was Bob Sorelli who owned the restaurant, an amazing Italian chef. And he had it for quite a few years and then he moved out to Savannah Road with it. Uh, and then he retired. Oh. But uh, it, it was right in the middle of Lewis and, and we would pack people in there. I don't know how many people you could get in. It can't even have been a hundred. And um, it was wonderful. After dinner, we'd have these little shows and uh, had a lot of fun. It was really great. Yeah, I, I remember also um, later, you did some shows up uh, at Atlantic Sands Absolutely. We were Absol dining it there. I did. I did. Uh, I did a production of the Vagina Monologues up That's there. That's what it was. Yep. Yep. And uh, and then I did Nonsense uh, in the convention center. I, I did uh, Vagina Monologues in the convention center. We had a good time. Hmm. Okay. So uh, is the does the Rosenegger building where where is it like? It's there. It's still there. It's an old building. I think it's near next to the bakery. Um, oh, okay. So it's like, it's not a restaurant anymore. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Okay, from Joe, uh, Jocelyn Kaplan. Hey, do Jocelyn. You, <laughs> do you anticipate, let me see if I can get this, Jocelyn, do you anticipate a venue for lesbians in Rehoboth Beach? Well, I just read that where restaurant G is, the old late lamented cloud nine uh, is going to have a new owner. And as I did with the two new, two other owners that came since cloud nine, I think we should all go over there and demand that they do Friday night for women over there. Because I, I just told somebody else, I believe that the two things, and actually I think Linda Bova may have said this to me, the two things that brought the women's community together in Rehoboth Beach were letters from Camp Rehoboth and Cloud Nine. And I want it back. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, hey, okay. Tony Burns. <laughs> All right. There Who has a question? Come on, people. Tommy, you're, let me unmute you. You need to unmute yourself, Tommy. Tony, Tony, I mean, Tony. Tony yeah. Unmute Tony, you yourself. You need to unmute yourself. There you go. I, I just did. Can you? Okay. Now we can hear you. Go ahead. You got a okay. question? Okay. Well, first of all, as you know, on Friday nights, uh, um, Diego's has women's Absolutely. Night. Absolutely. I've, I've, I've been there to capture uh, some of you for, for letters, and we'll have you in the next and final issue of the year in December. But, but congratulations. I've enjoyed uh, your presentation uh, so much, and uh, I'll have to collaborate with you on some additional uh, Absolutely. history. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Faye, uh, Tree asks, I always thought the Frog Pond was a gathering spot for the lesbian community. Was I totally wrong about that? Absolutely not. No, no. We, we were there among other people. It was really a, a, an eclectic group at the Frog Pond. But lots of nights there uh, when Vicki D performed and when we did trivia there, uh, a lot of gals went there. I just heard what I consider to be sad news that they're moving out to Route 1 with the pond. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I wish them well because it, it, it's a very popular venue and there's a big restaurant that's been sitting there for a year without anybody in it. And, uh, and so I think they'll do fine out there. Somebody else will take their place downtown. Faye, do you think that this, there's a trend with restaurants moving out of town? Is that going to continue? Or, I mean, what's your feeling about that? Back from my days at Main Street, I can tell you that many downtowns fear that, and that is what has been the destruction of downtowns all across the country. We have the beach. Uh, I believe uh, that the, 
the places that move out will be replaced by other good places. Uh, I don't think that's our problem, but of course, during COVID, you cannot tell. Uh, there are so many restaurants in trouble during this time that, uh, you know, if, if they can get cheaper rent somewhere else, maybe they will move. But I think that our downtown being uh, a Mecca for foodies and people who come and stay in the, in the lodging downtown uh, will always stay a vibrant community. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful about it. Okay. That leads me to a question I wanted to ask you because it's a little, I mean, I, I, I've been here, I was here uh, when Main Street first started, but I still get questions from people and I'm wondering if you could explain, people will say to me, well, you have a chamber of commerce, why do you have a Main Street? Can you? Yeah, they're two different organizations completely. Uh, first of all, Main Street is a nonprofit, and uh, people who donate to Main Street can get a tax write off of their donation. Uh, the Chamber is not a nonprofit. Oh. Uh, number two, uh, the Chamber uh, is in charge of the whole area uh, from Bethany up to uh, past Rehoboth, uh, you know, almost into Lewis, through Lewis. Um, and they, they are absolutely selling the area. Main Street has a different uh, mission. While um, tourism and getting people downtown is important to Main Street and part of the program, it's only part. It also does economic development downtown. It does architectural development downtown, meaning the sign programs. Uh, you may remember that many, many, almost all of the signs in downtown Rehoboth used to be those backlit box signs, a piece of light on a box. Yeah. And Main Street uh, changed the rule uh, to that it had to be front lit with lights coming down on the sign, you know, <coughs> individual letters. And this was just way more attractive. And so the, the Main Street program is concerned about how downtown looks, about banners, about, about uh, things like that. And, and there's, it's a much more complex program than the Chamber's job, which is selling the community. And by the way, they do it well, uh, but they are two different organizations. Thank you. That, that really clears it up for me because I just, oh, good. I always wondered, you know, just how do you explain that to people? It's um, hard. We have a comment. Can you see the chats? Uh, I cannot at the moment. No, wait, let me look. How do I do that? Nope, haven't been able to yet. Well, there's one. I don't know if you want to, to address this or not. Wait, here we go. Here we go. What, okay. what, what, what one from you? Sherry Berman. Do you feel comfortable addressing that or? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Hey, Sherry. Um, hey. Yeah. Uh, I, it was an ugly, ugly thing. But let me tell you that the outpouring of support that I have gotten from the community far, far outweighs the hideousness of the incident. I have gotten hundreds of comments on both Facebook, in my email, on, on Facebook Messenger, people I don't know talking to me about it. It, it just made me realize how incredible this area is. And actually, a, a lot of the comments were nationwide. People who, who read my, uh, who read my uh, books and who are on my Facebook page, other writers uh, chimed in. Uh, you should, I'm just so honored to have had that kind of response that it really makes the incident far less important in my mind. And, that, and that's great. I mean, uh, it, it was ugly. It was seven minutes of um, filthy, filthy people saying filthy things. And uh, the group who hosted now knows not to put the uh, Zoom uh, chat uh, online. <laughs> the, the, yeah. You know, uh, they, they have to give people passwords and, and, and get them yeah. in. But um, I think it was a good experience overall, because I cannot believe the wonderful outpouring of commentary. And people, not only did they talk to me about it, but they expressed their own disappointment in our country and their own outrage. So there was an amazing amount of content 
in the comments that I got. Uh, and, and I just loved them all. I, it was, I think it was uh, closing in on 2,000 uh, responses. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. I I, I, I'm blown away. I, that's what I spent the day after the incident doing. I, I'm sitting here at my computer looking, <laughs> oh my God. But it, it, was, it was remarkable. And that's the kind of town, uh, the kind of area. Uh, Sussex County, our part of Sussex County. Uh, wonderful people just amazing people. And you know what, this was a LGBT program and um, so many of the people I heard from were my neighbors, uh, straight neighbors, and it, it was remarkable. My favorite thing, my wife Bonnie said she couldn't believe it. The morning after that happened, my, my neighbor from next door came over to the house and he said, tell Faye that if she won't put that flag back up, I'm putting it up on my house. <laughs> And it was so sweet. It really was. Uh, and, and, and that's that made the whole thing worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's nice that something something good came out of something so horrible. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean exactly. That's that that's all I can say. Uh Tree also puts a comment in that she is so sorry that you were subjected to that. Um yeah, but it, it was it was a learning experience, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Who else has a question? Anybody? Nobody has any questions. I can't believe it. Wait, we got one here. Here we go. In the trees. Hi. Um, do you think that the parking issue at downtown is a problem? Oh, boy. Um, yes, I do. I, I, I hold a, a, a completely different opinion uh, than some of the commissioners here. When I was at Main Street, uh, before I left in 2009, we had a plan to turn the a convention center around the way they did, but use the parking lot for a building that would house a garage and some city offices. And uh, it was not adopted. And I, I truly think that uh, this community, like almost all the other communities I've been in for Main Street, and I went all over the country to places, uh, they all have garages. Uh, there was even a Main Street contests about how can you decorate the outsides to make them look better. Uh, but truly, I do think the parking problem <laughs> is hard. And I, I used to get very mad at people who would say, I'm not coming <laughs> to during the summer because I can't park. And quite frankly, it's not just the summer anymore. Right. And, and I, think, I think the time has come for someone to... Uh, stand up and say, no, no, uh, this is a very important issue and it should be dealt with. Yeah. I, 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 I sort of laugh, I chuckle when I hear people now that come up like it's a brand new idea that we should put a parking garage in right. the hotel. Right. Oh, well, I know. I've, <laughs> I've been talking about it for 20 years. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, I, and I wish they would do it. And, um, and there are other things they can do. I mean, yeah. they can have from right outside uh, on Rehoboth Avenue extended, they could have gotten property and had a garage out there. Uh, or at the very least, they could have had uh, not only the, the uh, school buses that come in or the big buses that come in, but they could have a shuttle. Uh, like so many towns have going at, from, uh, you know, place to place in town, so you don't need a car. Uh, there are so many things we can do. And it's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't seem to be a priority for the commissioners, which makes me sad. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at that. Um, I don't see anything else right now, so I'm going to chime in with another question that just fascinates me. The boat, the boat that you and Bonnie used to, now did you, prior to actually coming and docking the boat, did you travel to Rehoboth by boat often? No. Or was that the no. first time Never. you actually did that, that? That was the first time we did it. Um, we were scared to death uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first time, but um, it turned out to be easy. Uh, we, we, uh, we looked into the marina uh, on Collins Street, the Rehoboth Bay Marina, and we got a slip. And then we took two days and we came up from Annapolis into the C and D canal, and if no one's ever been there, it's fascinating. Go take a look at the C and D canal. There are restaurants on either side of it, uh, and we uh, anchored out 
in this little place they, they call the boat hole or something. And we put our anchor down and spent the night and went to one of the restaurants. And the next day, bright and early, we got back up and came out. As I said, they said, how'd you go? I said, I came out of the canal and hung a right. <laughs> <laughs> we just went down Delaware Bay and into the Roosevelt uh, Inlet in Lewis, through Lewis. And as we were coming up the canal on the uh, Rehoboth Avenue Bridge, lots of our friends gathered to wave us in. Oh. And it was amazing. It, it was really wonderful. And then we, we got through into the bay and into the marina. And our friends by this time had gone by car and now have all joined us at the marina. And we saw a marine flag up on one of the boats, a couple of slips away. And Bonnie said, oh, my God, I have to dock the boat next to a marine. I mean, this is this is so I mean, so she turned that thing around and gunned it back into the slip. That may have been the last time it was, but <laughs> it, it was very impressive. Uh, and that's how we got to town. And then- we, what, what kind of boat was it? It was a 28 foot cruiser called a Maxim. They don't uh, build them anymore, but it was a lot of fun. And if you're gonna talk about the boat, I'm gonna brag that Bonnie was able to take us from Rehoboth to New York City Wow. on that boat and we went out into the ocean and again hung a left <laughs> and followed the coast and went up to manhattan and oh that gosh. was a thrill that was just a thrill. i bet yeah it was great that was 1997. <laughs> where is the boat now for a long time it was still in the marina in dewey we sold it to a guy um, in the uh, end of 97 um, to a guy in the marina and it was there for a long time. I haven't seen it lately. Oh, but okay. uh, yeah, then we became, land we became land lovers. We had a con. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another, um, let's see, Mark. Mark, okay. Uh, the gay community is an important and integral part of Rehoboth. Can you talk about the darker days before Camp Rehoboth existed? Uh, I, I can talk about them, but I don't know about them personally. I was not here. But uh, I, I actually think that um, it was when in 1980, when the Renegade opened and it was immediately burned down, uh, there were people here who wanted the gays to leave and they, they were um, convinced that if they uh, did violence that would happen and it didn't. Um, I think that the idea of Camp Rehoboth, uh, making room for all made all the difference and I will say it over and over uh, because uh, Steve Elkins and Murray Archibald and the board of directors of camp were who they were they went out into the community and made people pay attention and, and, and worked with the unlikely places at the time. They worked with the library, they worked with the churches, they worked with the police department. Uh, it, was, it was things that nobody ever did before. And the next thing you knew, uh, the town really welcomed Camp Rehoboth and the gay community. And I will to this day tear up when I think of Steve Elkin's funeral where there were firefighters and police people in their uniforms at the funeral. The sign of respect was unbelievable. And that's because Camp Rehoboth uh, was able to bring everybody together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's Alan? see. I'm, yeah, I'm oh. Here, can you see? Yeah, you yes. can see. Okay. 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 David Garrett, wise guy, said I didn't even need to pay the Lewis Ferry toll <laughs> when I came in by boat. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Rehoboth Beach seems to be a great place for gay retirees and other older gays. Is there a future for young gay folks to come to? Oh, I think so, because uh, magically we were young once, and that's when we came here. Um, and I think, I think when I go 
Uh, I once went to the Blue Coast and sat outdoors to hear a group play last year when you could do that. Um, and I didn't know any of the women. I, I looked around and I didn't know anybody. And I thought it's happening. They're coming. They're 40 year olds, they're 50 year olds, they're coming. And so I think that will continue to happen. Now, obviously it's a retirement community because if you're a professional, it's very hard to get a job here. I mean, there really is no employment, uh, you know, so it will be a retirement community, I think for a long time for a lot of people. But uh, I think the young people are here. You go down to Poodle Beach on a uh, Saturday afternoon and people are here. Uh, maybe a little less because it's harder to rent a home. It's way more expensive to rent a group home than it used to be. Uh, but it's going to happen. It's, it's, it's still happening, I think. And let's see what else we got. Uh, any shows planned via Zoom this winter? I'd like to do that. I, I was talking to my friends who were the actors in the Stonewall show. And I think we're going to try to put it on Zoom. I think, uh, I don't know how my show would do on Zoom. I, I think it, I just watched a Broadway show on Zoom and it starred Patti Lapone, and I was so excited about it, but you know, it's flat. It's not, yeah. they, were, they were doing a reading and it was flat. And, and I, I'm not sure that I'm any better than Patti Lapone. <laughs> <God knows. laughs> so I think mine would not be as good as hers. And I was ha 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 at hers, so I don't know. But we're yeah. gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Sure. Okay, and then somebody just asked, what adventure are, are we planning once the pandemic goes away? Well, luckily my spouse put the winning ticket in for an Olympia, I mean, Olivia Cruise, an Olivia Cruise next October to Greece. And I'm hoping we get to do that. Oh. And actually, yeah, that's, that's what I'm planning. And in the meantime, as soon as I can get out to do, to do restaurant reviews again, I'm, I'm excited about that too. So we shall see. Okay. Um, uh, the next question is, ha have the last four years, especially noted increase in bigotry nationally changed Rehoboth? You know, I don't think they did. I think we've been very lucky. And um, I, I think, you know, with a couple of exceptions, like the horrible two events we had last weekend, if nobody know knows about them, uh, Charlotte King, who runs the uh, Alliance for Social Justice, her lawn was destroyed by people writing Trump in five foot letters in weed killer. And then the um, assistant captain of the uh, Lewis fire department yeah. uh, came to a show at the blue moon and felt the need to, uh, you know, tell, use a horrible slur in describing it. And then I had the zoom bombing. So it was sort of a trifecta of events, but you know, we haven't had it. And I think most of the people here uh, have, uh, you know, they haven't changed their attitude and people who have always been anti-gay uh, are still anti-gay. They just don't do anything about it here. Uh, you know, we did see a lot of Trump flags when we were boating with friends this summer. We saw a lot of Trump flags and all kinds of things up and, and uh, there, there are varying opinions here, but so far, I think we've been very lucky. I think so too. Um, thank. I, there's there's a lull in the chat, so I'm going to ask to put another one of my questions. Out. All right, go for it. Uh, theater in Rehoboth. Uh, we have clear space now. Um, you've done things, as you say, at at camp. Do you see that as something that may be coming more and more? Well, I hope so. Uh, and as far as clear space is concerned, I know it's uh, the uh, two buildings on Rehoboth Avenue have gone back to the Planning Commission and I, I don't know what they're doing with it. And it would be, it would be shameful if they took this nonprofit and forced it to go out of town. Uh, I, I think that the parking problems are the same parking problems that uh, you have when you have a successful restaurant. So I, I, I seriously don't think that is standing in its way and, and we'll have to see. But I intend to, I, I'm bored enough. Uh, I intend to come back. I, I'm going to do something. And, it, you know, I'm hoping that people will 
keep doing, you know, a lot of the performers in the outdoor spaces we have here. Uh, and uh, there have been not enough to my mind, but people who have done Broadway music. And uh, I'd like to keep up that tradition. So hopefully I'll get a chance to do another show or two around here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Excuse me. Faye, I don't, I can't figure out how to do the chat. What kind of experience did Bonnie have to be able to do all this sailing? Uh, she, she, well, she went to the Annapolis Sailing School oh. for six sessions or whatever. <laughs> and we, we started a sail, we had a sail, but we didn't have a sailboat, but we rented a sailboat. And I hated it. Um, I was always like afraid I was going to fall off the front while I was doing something with the ropes and it made me crazy. So I, and I also wanted to turn the key and go somewhere. I didn't want to wait for the wind to push me somewhere. So I convinced her to get a power boat and then we had friends who gave her lessons and uh, boy, she's good at it. So it, it was, <laughs> it was yeah. a lot of fun. It was, it was amazing. I, I was the uh, bartender. On the <laughs> Somebody has that. to be. Yeah, nobody let me do anything important. <laughs> oh, well, that's important. That's important. That's, yeah. that's yeah. important, too. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Uh, is anybody else having trouble with the chat and would like to ask a question? Please go ahead. I guess not. I think that may be it. Well. I, I say I can't thank you enough for helping with this inaugural program. We won't be doing anything in December, but we will then be trying, we'll be doing this with a few more oral histories coming up well, in January. I think that's exciting. I, I can't wait to be uh, on the Zoom with everybody for those too. Yeah, okay, this is a good. wonderful thing, a wonderful thing. So that, and, thank you very, very much. And oh, here, Laura Taylor. Oh, thank you, Faye. Thank you so well, much. And you're yeah. welcome, yeah. everybody. It's great to see you. A lot of thank yous. For thank, thank you. Uh, Thanks, will, kids. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a minute just to tell everybody, we are the museum is in fact in December the two, first two weekends in December, the museum will be opening for limited hours by reservation only. We're going to display the uh, Paul Lovett's di uh, railroad diorama that so many people have been interested in and wanted to see in person. They've seen videos of it on our website, etc. So um, if you're interested in that, you'll, you can go to our website, um, call, call the museum and leave a message and we'll get back to you. So just wanted to put that out there too. So that'll be, thing. yes, Laura, Laura Taylor. Laura? Are you saying you're just waving goodbye? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you. I am so honored to have been interviewed and to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you very have, much. Have a nice okay. Happy day. Thanksgiving, everybody. Everybody, enjoy and be safe. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay.